All right, it's time to test these modules at full capacity. Let's do it. What are we talking about here? Well, the Boston swing modules. We tested them a few days ago and we discovered that this design here on the top only allows for about 50 amps to be removed. There's a bottleneck right here and then a bottleneck here and here. Uh, this was the worst by far. Uh, it got up to 100 degrees Celsius at around 80 amps, right? So at 50, it'll get warm, but when, it won't get dangerous, right? But of course, the battery cells, the swing, each one of these ones could do uh, 15 amps continuous, and there's eight of them. So you should be able to get about 120, 100, something like that, about 120 amps continues off of these cells without them getting too hot. And so now today we're gonna test that by connecting the positive leads and negative leads directly to the current collectors here so that they don't have to travel very far uh, on this bus bars here. So therefore we're gonna test to see how hot it gets at a full uh, 100. I mean, whatever this thing can do is a 3000 watt inverter. We're gonna load it up the max and then just hope for the best that nothing is gonna melt. Uh, but I think it's gonna be okay because these boards were not hot and the cells were not hot at 80 last time. So I think we'll be able to do up to 120, no problem. So let's start this test. Of course, obviously uh, the load is very simple. Battery is connected to this inverter and then this inverter is connected to this um, heater. And so this heater could pull quite a bit of current and uh, then we're gonna record this whole thing with our little trusty uh, thermal camera. Okay, here we go. Um, we're gonna turn on our heater here and we're gonna see how much ooh there we go do those two match 22 28 30 31 they match now this one only goes up to 100 that's why I'm using this one but this one's higher quality so there we go so Okay, so there we go, 80 amps. So we are loading this battery with 80 amps and look at that. The cells are sagged a bit, eh, not that much. So we'll see how this uh, module does. We plugged a second unit so that we can get this to 100 amps. Let's see here, it's at 63, 71, 80, 90, 100. So that's us. Uh, the uh this one's overloading right there right but this one is showing 103 so we can remove this guy now how hot are is this already it's been a few minutes it's going at 100 amps the cells are lukewarm just yeah, like, just lukewarm. Um, not quite yet as warm as a human, like if you were to touch someone's back, right? So of course the, the thermal camera is gonna have a better reading on this, but just to give you an example, uh, the bus bars are also lukewarm. They're not getting hot at all. The cables, also lukewarm nothing's heating up here the cells are slightly below or below um, but that's a, you know that's full load right there
right and we are doing full load now 120 amps in this module that means every cell is seeing about 15 amps which is where they're rated and the modules are getting around 36 C that's not very hot that's just a hot day well less spring day Alright, so that concludes our test. We uh, the inverter is gave us the alarm already, so that means the voltage is low. Let's take a look at how hot it got. Uh, according to this, it got to like 51, and it's now is cooling down to 49. So it's about 50 degrees Celsius. Let's take this camera and then get it closer to the module so we can show exactly where and what got hot. All right, so here we go. The cells got to 57, according to this thing. According to this camera, 60. 60? Yeah, 60 is warm. That's my hand there. Ooh, yeah, 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 that's, that's warm. Um, how about these ones? Yeah, 60, the same thing. The bus bars do not seem to have gotten that hot. So the bottleneck here now is the cells. So we, we reached the limit of the cells. 120 amps continuous. Um, that's the limit there because now, yeah, they're getting hot. Look at that. 63. Oh, that's funny. It doesn't seem like this one's as hot. That second one, it seems to be hotter than the second. Maybe it's just because it's in there, sandwiched between the two. But um, here we go. You can see inside. These holes go inside the modules. Ooh, 68. That's hot in there. Yeah, these black ones right here, these are the, the actually, no, the positive. But that's the casing of the cell, so that's why I think they are darker, which means they're cooler. And then the, these ones right here, these are the negatives which have the little dot these these cells are backwards like that the button right and so the button is getting hotter because there's less surface for it to dissipate the heat there so there we go we hit the max of the cells and now the cells are cooling off at 59 degrees yeah so 100 120 is the max and that's that uh matches what the data sheet says for these cells right so all right so there we go this is essentially uh 3c cells right uh capable cells and the module does support that what gets hot in here is the cells and not the bms and the current collectors uh not the pm the pcbs or the current collectors or the little um the nickel strips right we're using a bit uh, actually, the production ones are going to have slightly bigger than that. These are undersized. We opted to go with this size, which is bigger. So that means it's going to transmit the current a lot easier than that module that we have over there. Which is good news because if these can carry the 15 amps... Oh, and by the way, this module had... A lot of these had a single spot well you see that one has a single spot well single spot well single spot well so i wanted to test that if we can get away with doing a single spot well or we have to do multiple right and so this shows that yeah single spot well can carry the 15 amp load uh including on even even on this small thin uh nickel strip right but since we chose to use the thicker one um we are going to be okay so this 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 module is probably capable more right but the cells are not so as long as we can get full power out of the cells i'm happy now i am gonna redesign in fact i have already redesigned this top board here we move these sections over here further this way and then the tr the traces now are going they're thicker and so We've also moved these all to the center, right? And so what we did is we, we put um, a section that you can put a nickel strip across these in here so that you can have a big 
trace on the bottom and then a big trace on the top that is a bridge with nickel strip. So we're gonna test that. I think depending on how that goes, we might have to double up on these here, but we might be able to get full power off of this top portion here um, without having to go through this because this adds a little bit. If you're putting multiple of these modules in, this kind of adds complexity. Now you have to space them apart so you can have the room for these cables. And now you have an asymmetrical thing in here, you know, um, hopefully this is going to work where we can do that, or at least above 100 amps. If you can remove about 100 amps off here, it might work for a lot of people. So those are a further development that is going to have. But for now, these modules work. Obviously, you can get 50 amps through here or 120 amps through through the main things here and so we're going to add this info to our listing on our website and these are available at jack35.com now if you're watching this today these are currently and special because today is uh cyber monday so we have uh i i think i don't know when the sale is gonna end uh i haven't talked to my people to see but i think for the next couple of days i think we're still gonna be able to get i think 10 percent off of a store-wide uh inventory and so you'll be able to get those 10% uh, discount for what they're going to cost regularly right so if you're interested click on the link below they're going to jack 35 thank you for watching we'll see you guys later bye